Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Mandy and I'm going to try to do a bloom over that pour that I kind of think was a fail. So I'm using up some Oopsie House paint and I'm going to show you the colors as I go. If you saw my sunset bloom attempt, um, I mentioned that I had mixed my prism pour colors a little too thin. So while I was kind of thickening them up, I had kind of a color idea. Um, involving the Peruvian opal and um, the teal indigo vivid intense and the blue black and so I was like you know I still had some I'm still trying to use up paint um, so I had kind of my stash of colors that's the teal indigo vivid intense so I had kind of my stash of colors I've already started out and I looked at a couple of colors and I was like you know I think these would make cool colors together so um, the Vivid Intense color I added on top of that is blue-black, so I think it would be fun to try this, this color combo again and maybe not use these darker colors on the bottom. Um, but anyway, I sped this up because I needed to do a voiceover, so I'm going to show you the colors as I go. That is Icy Blue. That's a primary element from the Frosted Sorbet set. And um, most of the colors in that set have very large sparkly particulates, so they're really nice in like um, one of the bottom layers of your bloom. That's a new prism pour color called Bally High, I think. Um, it's beautiful. Um, it kind of reminds me of like the color of Mally Ringneck Blue Boom Gel. It's a beautiful color. Um, so I was thickening up this color, and that's what made me think you know, this color with some like frosty or blues and the Peruvian opal um, would look really beautiful. This color is a primary element called Poseidon's blue. It's kind of a deep grayish blue. Um, it's a beautiful color. And then this is the Peruvian opal. It is a new prism pour color. So if you missed the um, video where I mixed up the prism pour set, it's a couple of videos back, um, and I show you how I mix them for blooms, showed you the new set, also showed you mixing up that teal indigo vivid intense color. Um, so I'm just adding some more of the vivid intense on the top, and I'm going to use a dual cell activator. So I'm using titanium white from M. Graham mixed with Australian Floetrol. And I'm using Payne's Gray from M. Graham, also mixed with Australian Floetrol. My Payne's Gray is older and I really should have thinned it out a little bit with some Aussie Floetrol because it was a little bit thick and hard to blow out. So I think after this video I, I thinned it out. So that was one of the reasons I did a dual cell activator because I need to use it. Um, and when you do a dual cell activator with the white on the bottom and like a color like this on the top, you get these cool like bubbly cells. Some They look a little cobblestone-y. Um, so hang with me, this first blow, I end up messing up and pouring over it, so um, voicing over this video also made this video not be too long. So I know you can't entirely see, but you can see a little bit better. I was able to fix the angle of my tripod to kind of come at an angle so you can kind of see what's happening a little bit better. So um, don't forget about the discount codes in the description box, there's 20% off of anything color art using Mandy 1120 and um, for um, Australian flow trial I get it from pixel paint designs um, and there's a 10% off code using Mandy 10 in all caps so right there I just that's where I messed up and blew down into the pillow so I I tried to see if I could fix it um, everything I was doing kind of made it worse you can kind of see the bubbly cells in the middle that I was talking about. Um, they're kind of neat. So <clears throat> when I finished this bloom, I was like, oh, I love this color. And then I <laughs> looked at an old video and I was like, it's kind of similar to these colors only. I think once this is resined, you'll see the difference um, because of those grayish blue colors like the Peruvian opal and the Poseidon's blue. Uh, will look uniquely different than something that has like an interference green or something in it. So anyway, I love it. Um, but hang with me because this one, 
This one, it's not terrible, but that white, that, that gray spot really bugs me. And um, I, I am going to pour over it and we'll be much happier with the results. Um, I am still trying to use up this gray paint. When I was first doing blooms and they were not as successful, um, which some days they still aren't, right? I bought Oopsie paint from Home Depot or Lowe's quite often, as long as it was, you know, eggshell or satin or whatever. Um, and sometimes they worked great and sometimes they didn't. And so I still have quite, like, I have like two quarts of this color. I thinned it with a little flow trawl. So I'm trying to use it. Um, I don't want to waste it, but I have, I still have gallons of paint like that. And some of them were less useful than others. So, you know, at the time, um, I was comparing nine bucks for oopsie paint by the gallon to like 25 bucks when I was buying Glidden. And that was a huge savings when you're practicing and failing a lot, but it also affects your composition because you're not necessarily using something that is, re that's as reliable as a good pillow. So, you know, sometimes you get what you pay for, but I do want to use the colors if I can. So here we are going again. Um, but that, this has been a fairly useful pillow. I mean, it's not amazing, but it's not terrible and it's kind of neutral. So it works. So in this one, I tried to be a little less heavy handed on the bottom, um, but I wanted to put a layer of the Vivid Intense on the bottom because I don't super trust the pillow without having a little bit of a barrier there. Um, but you can tell at this point I'm just like slinging paint and I almost forgot one of the colors, but I think it works out. So that was the Vivid Intense, um, the teal indigo and the blue black, and this is the Icy blue. And then Valley High. All right, then Tuck It Blue. And I think that's blue black. Then I remembered I hadn't put the Peruvian opal, which is so pretty. This also would be pretty if you added true silver prism pour. Or even did a silver cell activator. All right, now let's add our CA. And blow it out. Looks like such a disaster right now, right? Because we covered up the other one. All right, we'll blow this one out real quick and then I'll show you a close up. You can see that blue is a little thick, it's hard to move. I'm all concentrating like I'm blowing it out right now. I definitely had a much better blowout on this one. I think once I knew the blue was going to be difficult to maneuver, I kind of knew going in and I was able to account for it. And after, like I said, after this video, I thinned it out because I do need to use it up and make a fresh, fre fresh batch. <laughs> And so um, I wanted to go ahead and make it usable. All right, so see those cute little cells in the middle? Some more is going to develop. And since we just had so much in the middle, I just helped a little bit with the um, turkey baster. I have noticed if I do that too much with a white cell activator, it makes it travel into the colors. So I try not to do it too much with a single cell activator, but with a double, you can kind of get away with it and it gives you a couple more cute cells in the middle. 
But a lot of times if you'll just let it develop, it will, they'll pop up. It's just a thicker layer because you have, you know, two different cell activators. So now we're trying to get it to the edge. I didn't use a ton of pillow paint to cover up the first one, so we're just trying to spin enough to get coverage. Um, and there was a lot of paint on my turner. I was getting paint everywhere. So, but you know, other than the fact that my cells got kind of big from having to spin a lot, I really love the way this one turns out. And I think under resin, it's gonna be really gorgeous. So, um, so you can see we're about an inch away on one side. Um, so you, I think I end up kind of helping the paint by blowing it a little bit. So sorry about my head being in the way, but I didn't want to have to overspin just to get some coverage there. So I just messed with it a little and gave it a good spin. So yeah, you'll have to let me know what you think. Um, I'll bring you down momentarily for a little close-up, and then once I resin it, I'll share it as a short. But this is a 10-inch uh, MDF round. And uh, I really love the colors, and it was crazy. I was just thinning out some of the paints, and I was like, oh, this color would look really good with this color, and we could add in this color, and... Um, now I would, I think it'd be really cool if you added in some like abalone shell or something kind of a frosty white. Anyway, I always love blues and teals. Can't go wrong with them. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. It was a kind of a shorter video, even though we had a fail, but, um, I just kind of wanted you to see the process. So... I think I think it turns out really beautiful. Now, obviously, the white lacing in the middle is very big because of the dual cell activator. If we had just used white, it would be different. And I wanted to do one with just white so you could see the difference, um, but I ran out of time on this particular day, or I would have done a kind of a two for one because it would have been very different looking, but still beautiful. All right, so let me bring you down. Oh my gosh, this bloom is fantastic. I hope it dries very nicely. So with a dual cell activator, not all of them, but when you do white on the bottom and something like Payne's Gray on the top, you get these bubbly cell, act I mean cells. This cluster here would be more like what you get with just white but they're very round and bubbly. They're very cute. If I have time, what I'd like to do is do this exact color palette with just white so you can see how different. But look at those colors. I'm so glad that I had this idea. Spun out the middle a little bit too much to get some of that paint off, but I'm so glad I poured over that. Oh my gosh. Okay. Thanks for watching. I, I don't know that I'm gonna have time to do the other one right now. Look at that. Okay, let me know what you think. Bye.